for Tuesday, September 12th. Um, we'll start with our agenda, and the first item on the agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, moving through these first couple of agenda items, the first is adjustments to the agenda. I'm not aware of any for this evening. Um, moving on to approval of the August school board minutes, and that was from August 23rd. Any adjustments there? Um, I think um, we did make a correction at that meeting, and I don't think it's reflected in the new staff. That's right. It's, that, it's incorrect. So I'll change okay. it. I'm sorry. Okay. So the uh, minutes will be adjusted to reflect. Okay, and moving right along, um, comments by our high school students. And if you could introduce yourself to us again. Um, I'm Kirsten Barton, and I'm a senior at the high school. I'm Sarah Nelson, and I'm a junior at the high school. And the first thing I wanted to talk about was the senior open campus. And so far, it's been going pretty well. It's taken a little bit of getting used to on the part of the students just remembering the times for the schedule so that to make sure they're back on time and everything. But I think everyone's getting used to it and it's going pretty well, everyone's enjoying it. And also our sports teams have been doing pretty well this fall. There's an away girls soccer game at Greeley tonight, so hopefully they'll win, but everyone's doing well. So. Um, our junior class, we had class meetings today at school and our junior class decided that we would start a school environment committee and I am the chairman of that committee, but we're going to be working with issues concerning the environment at school, like um, whether or not there's smoking in the school and how we're gonna end that and prevent that and just other issues that people bring up. And I know that the freshmen are also starting a similar committee, so we're gonna be working with them and Mr. Ely to try to change some of the environmental issues within the school. Um, prom committee, there's gonna be the prom this year at the Pavilion Dance Club and since we haven't had any SAC meetings yet, we don't really have much else. Okay, any uh, questions for Kirsten or Sarah? Good job, thanks. Um, moving on to communications. Not seeing any um, movement there. Um, comments from the public? And we'll move on again. Um, we have some recognition items. Uh, we do have um, two individuals we would like to recognize this evening. So if um, George would join me at your podium. In an ongoing effort in this year, uh, as we started last year, um, we are making every attempt to recognize outstanding achievements that we have not only with our, uh, among our faculty, but also our students. And our first person to be recognized this evening is Liz Allen, and she's pre being presented a certificate of recognition, um, and it reads, this certificate is presented by the Cape Elizabeth School Board in recognition of outstanding achievement for having received the State of Maine Secretary of State's 1999-2000 8th grade Citizenship Award. Now this did happen at the tail end of last year um, and Nancy Hutton um, explained what the process was and the team leaders and, and they felt that Liz was the 8th grader who most exemplifies the, the qualities in this award that is given by the Secretary of State. So the school board would also like to recognize you, Liz, for your outstanding achievement. And 
we are very fortunate to have a staff member um, who has put a great deal of effort um, at, this, at the state level. And this, is, this award reads, the Cape Elizabeth School Board presents this award for outstanding accomplishment to Ingrid Stressinger in recognition of her outstanding accomplishment as an educator at the Pond Cove School as evidenced by your selection as a finalist for the State of Maine Presidential Award for Excellence in Science and Math Teaching in appreciation on behalf of the Cape Elizabeth School Board. Um, and I understand that there will be a final selection that's still yet to come. So you're in the running among, I think, four individuals in the state, three in the state, um, for the uh, finalist award for the state. So that's thank incredible. you. without um, saying how um, pleased I am with the outpouring from the community and uh, so many congratulations and best wishes wherever I go, um, in the school, at the IGA, um, my daughter's sporting events, uh, seventh grade open house when I was there for my daughter and I've just truly been overwhelmed and I want the community to know how much I appreciate that. That means so much and I really am just one representative of so many teachers in the school who bring so many talents and abilities and tremendous dedication to their jobs and I'm really honored to, to be a representative of so many others. So, thank, thank you. you. Thank Thanks. You. Okay, we're going to move on to the superintendent's report. I'd just like to take a moment to update you on our uh, future direction action teams and where we are. Right now, um, we are in the process of, of putting together action teams for our strategic plan and strategic goals. Um, there will be an orientation for all members uh, later this month, and that process of writing specific action plans um, will begin in earnest probably at the beginning of October. Um, with periodic, so I plan on each meeting to give you an update of, as to the progress of those action plans. That's great. And um, that will be happening at every, every meeting. board meeting. Um, we'll move on now to the principal's reports, and we'll start with Pete from the high school. I'd like to add my congratulations to Liz and to Ingrid. We now claim Liz as a high school student, so we kind of feel that a high school student is recognized tonight. <laughs> is that okay? <laughs> Don't worry, I've got We have, we, we have had a uh, very solid start, I think, to the beginning of the year. Uh, the energy is, uh, is palpable. I mentioned in my letter to the parents that uh, with, with talk of the looming energy crisis for the winter and so forth. If we could just bottle uh, all that's going on over there, I think we'd solve that fairly quickly. Um, there's not a lot to uh, report uh, at this point. I wanted to bring a couple of things to, uh, especially the anybody that's viewing, a couple of dates to mind. Uh, remember that open house is September 20th for the high school. That would be seven o'clock in the evening and we will follow the traditional format of, of walking through an abbreviated uh, form of son or daughter's uh, schedule. And uh, teachers will be presenting their curriculum, obviously, in condensed fashion to uh, the parents at that point. And we also, uh, for those parents who have gone through the process before, will be, um, uh, as we did last year, we won't be using the open house for parent conference sign-up. We found that that was taking too much energy from the uh, open house presentations themselves. Instead, we will uh, announce uh, parent conference sign-ups uh, a little bit later, and uh, they will be handled by the secretaries in the main office again, like we did last year, and it worked quite well, I think, and uh, it didn't detract from the open house in that way. Reminder that homecoming is coming up, homecoming weekend is coming up the 22nd and the 23rd. The 22nd, uh, there, aren't, there aren't any games on the 22nd, but the, um, uh, the uh, teams will have their team dinner. The boosters are helping to put that together and uh, followed by 
the traditional skits uh, by the teams, an introduction of uh, the various players, and then the 23rd uh, is a full slate of, of contests. Um, I wanted to remind, because this one was a late entry to our calendar, I want to make sure that, um, again, that parents are aware that November 7th, which is Election Day, will be a late start day in the high school. Uh, that serves two purposes. Uh, one, it will relieve the traffic congestion uh, at the polling place in, the, in probably the busiest time of the day, the, the, the early morning. Uh, so that students won't be driving at the same time that many voters will be coming to the polls. And also it will give uh, high school faculty uh, another opportunity to grab an hour and a half for uh, working together to improve what we do at the high school. Uh, I'd mentioned that the first uh, late start day, which is September 20th, we will be, the, the faculty at the high school will be working on what I would call an inventory at this point, an inventory of the types of assessment that students are uh, exposed to now in each of the departments, which types of assessment are all students um, exposed to, which types are students that are in certain classes exposed to, uh, that will help us to track which of the, uh, uh, the learning results we are uh, reaching all students with and which, uh, which uh, of the learning results are um, uh, being taught more selectively because if students take certain elective courses they reach uh, that level but may not be exposed in others. And then from there, uh, I think uh, also part of that morning will be um, some brainstorming within the departments of, okay, what would be our next steps? Um, we see what we have right now, where can we take it in terms of building uh, a local assessment system in the high school that, uh, that reaches all students. So that will be the theme of the day uh, on, uh, on the 20th. Uh, and those one and a half hour sessions are, I think, excellent for that type of departmental discussion and uh, time uh, without those uh, late starts or early uh, release days time is short for those types of things. I think it's a very important addition and I'd like to thank the board for including those this year. Uh, finally, I, I, I want to uh, just build upon a comment that Sarah made in her report uh, and I, I applaud it. Um, to hear that um, some of the classes are willing to take a leading role in attacking some of the issues that go on in terms of the general environment is very encouraging because from past experience, our most successful efforts uh, in stopping some of the, uh, the, the problems that come up in any high school are when the students get very much involved. Uh, by far, they have been uh, the most effective uh, when, when they've chosen to get involved, so I really applaud that initiative on their part. I think that's all that I have for right now. Yeah. Pete, the um, election day late start, is that only a late start for the high school? That's only the high school. Other questions or comments for Pete? Thank you very much. Move on to the middle school. Nancy. Well, of course, we want to add our continued congratulations to Liz, and we do remember as a fine member of our student body, um, but it was time for her to move on to the high school, so we don't mind sharing Liz and all her expertise with the high school, um, but we're certainly very proud to have her as part of our school uh, for four years as well. Also want to take a moment to extend our good wishes to Ingrid as well. She is a very outstanding representative of many teachers and all the teachers in our school system and we wish her the best of luck in her journey and experience with the presidential awards. We're off to a fantastic start. Um, lots of energy in the middle school and it's easy to see because we are a pretty busy place. Um, we always are, but this year it seems like we're busier and it may be because we're um, at our largest capacity for a long time. We have 605 students um, that are present almost every single day. Last year we had 560 and it's not that we had a lot of people move in. In fact, we only had about 16 new students. Last year we had around 30. Uh, the difference is we sent a class of 128 students to the high school and received a class of 159. So that takes care of a lot of the difference. But um, Lots of things going on. The student council is getting organized and by the October meeting I hope that our school board representatives will be elected and will be present to share their perceptions of life in the middle school with you. We've done our curriculum nights. They were very well attended. Um, I think quite informative from the feedback that I received from parents. And 
Shortly, all of our course overviews will be posted on our website. We've run into a little technical glitch with some of it, but we're working it out, and um, they will all be there so that people can peruse them and then call teachers with specific questions. One of the things I wanted to share with you tonight is that it was a busy summer in the middle school. Once again, we had a lot of people who do summer work um, over the last several years for middle school teachers. That seems to be a real popular time for them to work on curriculum. World Language did some more updating, especially with some of their grammar lessons and sequences. Our student assistance team went to a day of renewal training, as well as they also put in a day to work on the curriculum for our instructional support program, which is new this year, and developing that. Beverly Bisbee and Gail Parker, I think, spent the entire <coughs> summer in the computer lab uh, working on several things. And I, I'd like to be able to tell you that I knew what every single one of them was. But I know one of them is an Avio thing that they're working on with a video. They had a consultant come. And they've done a nice lesson with things with the Spurwink Church and incorporating it with different web links that they're going to share with, both, with all of the teachers, and um, especially in social studies, but just to connect people. They also worked on another project, um, Cape Elizabeth Reads and Writes, and it's connecting fifth and seventh grade classrooms uh, without actually having to be in each other's classrooms, even within our school, but also then connecting to the community. Their website, I believe their, their website address for this is going to be on our school website, and then you can go to that and have several surveys, and they'd love people to go to those. In language arts, um, two fifth grade teachers, Cheryl Higgins and Jill Bell, worked on some continued activities for the novels they read in common. Julie Salika spent quite a bit of the summer working on some health policies and procedures and working on our health curriculum, which we're offering to our sixth grade students this year as part of our physical education program. And in social studies, um, Deb and Paul Casey worked together to make the transition as Paul was moving from sixth grade to eighth grade um, with his social studies program. And right off early in the summer, um, all of our 7th and 8th grade science teachers met and worked together. At that time, uh, we also um, invited our newest 7th grade science teacher, Joanne Paquette. She came and joined them. And one of the science teachers came literally running down the hall, and he said, Nancy, have we got someone with a lot of energy and ideas? We are really going to be good. And uh, for three days, they all worked very hard and very excited about the things they have to bring to the students this year. So I think we're off to a great start. Uh, we look for lots of adventures and excitement throughout the year, and um, I think that's sort of just about the kickoff. So, any questions that you have? Questions or comments? Sounds great. Thanks, Nancy. Thanks. We're going to move on to Pond Cove, Tom. Good evening. My congratulations, too, to the award winners. It's, it's been my personal pleasure to have worked with. Uh, Ingrid as a classroom teacher, a member of the science committee uh, for the building and for the whole system. And I know she does a lot of work around the state. And if anybody deserves that kind of recognition, Ingrid does. So, well, I'm going to sound like Pete and Nancy. We're up to a great start. Um, it's just been a terrific beginning of the year. The custodial maintenance crews uh, have done their usual great job. Sue always gets the buses to school on time, which is an issue at Pond Cove, as you know, Sue. And she always gets it done well. The teaching staff uh, before school opened put in a lot of personal time. Some people even had uh, open houses for their parents. And I know that they always feel that uh, there's always one more thing to do and they could be better, but I think for tonight I'll just say they did a great job and they deserve a lot of credit for that. This is also the first year that our loopers are continuing with a group. And as much as everybody is happy, you may be able to spot them a little more easily. They look happier than everybody else. Mm -hmm. They're just delighted. They're trying not to gloat. They're really pleased with where they are with the classes already. As Nancy mentioned, um, we use the time uh, during the summer as much as we can for curriculum uh, development. And Pond Cove had a series of meetings with technology that Marla really fronted this year and did a really good job for getting uh, at least outlining expectations for introduction to computer up through com computer skills in grade four. We also had uh, meetings in social studies and a really intense and productive meeting in writing, which set, set the tone for meeting our goal of doing our literary, literacy inquiry this year. Pete mentioned how valuable we foresee the uh, added additional hour and a half will be eight times during the year, and we, we just can't wait to use it next week. Um, it's, as, as Pete mentioned, just the right amount of time, and I, I hope it really works well. Um, 
We've also used faculty meeting times, and so rolling that together, I think we're in a really extremely good position to have a good year with that. We also, you also mentioned last year you wanted to hear about assessment. We, we actually started our assessment in August with uh, a gentle and I think really a, effective um, interview observational survey with all incoming first graders. All that data has been entered on the computer. The reading recovery team has sat down with the grade one teachers, not just for reading and recovery, but to kind of jumpstart reading instruction in grade one. Uh, Pete loves the alliteration, data-driven dialogues. Well, I saw one last week, and it's really impressive. Last week, we did the uh, more conventional, but I still think effective degrees of reading power, reading comprehension testing in grades three and four. And grade two will be doing a different kind of standardized reading, reading uh, assessment next week, the, the um, developmental reading assessment. Um, we're committed to not just administering those tests, but to getting the data back, using it for individual tinkering with instruction and to evaluate our programs. Nancy mentioned the um, SAT at the middle school, the student assist assistance team. We call it the teacher assistance team for some reason at Pond Cove. It's already up and running, following up on commitments we made last year and helping us meet the district goal of meeting the needs of all learners. And finally, I, I think another dimension to the enthusiasm, at least at Pond Cove, is the annual work of the PCPA, welcoming new students at the new family orientation, getting their pictures up on the bulletin board, hosting a breakfast for teachers and parents last week. Um, I think when you roll that all together, it just makes a big difference, and that accounts for, I think, the continual momentum we have this year. We appreciate it. And That's don't worry, eight game lead is nothing. We're, we'll make it up, Pete. Don't worry. We'll be there. <laughs> Questions or comments for Tom? Sounds great. Great. Thank you. Sounds like all of the schools are off to a terrific start. We're going to move on to, oh. Tom, just in terms of, uh, I just had a, I, maybe just a question, or maybe it's going to come out as a comment. In, in terms of looping, um, uh, sort of my unsophisticated um, read on what we were try trying to accomplish was we were trying to maximize um, instructional time. Right. That was one of the goals, and, right. and I'm sure there were other pieces. So this is really the, the, the test. This, this is, is the, the test time to see if, in fact, we, th this, this mode of, of looping is, is, is going to um, accomplish that goal. We, we have a, a draft assessment that the, uh, or survey that the uh, loopers are going to look at, which is going to ask gentle questions of the teachers, the students, and the parents, um, just to see how effective it was in terms of time and for building community and so on. It's pretty exciting. N not, not everybody has to do it, but the people who are doing it are really happy with it. Well, that's great. It would be nice to get some um, uh, continued feedback about how they're right. all doing. That's good. Thank great. you. Great. Yep. That's not charged against my time. No, 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 no. <laughs> Quest questions from the board do not get charged against your time. <laughs> um, we're going to move on to committee reports, and we'll start with Kevin um, with uh, this evening's finance subcommittee. As George said, the finance committee met tonight. Our primary business was housekeeping um, and or oversight um, of items that we do every month, and that is to sign warrants, which for the public's benefit is a list of all payments made since our last finance committee meeting. And we also reviewed the appropriation report, which is the entire line-by-line -line budget of the school system to review what has or hasn't been spent against specific budget items. Uh, so that was taken care of. Pauline provided us with a financial update on staff changes. As you know, uh, we had teachers resign and retire who needed to be replaced. And our instruction to the administration has always been to hire the best qualified replacements without regard to uh, how much we're going to pay an individual teacher. Uh, as a result of all the pluses and minuses, we have an excess in that fund of $27,000 this year versus $75,000 last year. Um, so we're, in, uh, we're pretty close this year. We're a lot tighter than we were last year. In addition, we have received unan some unanticipated funds, uh, Title I funds, which is a 
that's reading, Tom? Uh, so title one is the chapter one program. Um, of 12,006 and the class size reduction grant of just under uh, $23,000. Uh, next month, uh, we have two significant items at the Finance Committee. We're going to review the financial statements, which we'll receive during the month. And also, we are asked, uh, Ernie McVeigh will be coming to the meeting to uh, update us on capital improvements in the schools. That's great. Thank you. Um, policy Subcommittee. Jennifer? Uh, we had our first meeting September 6th and uh, most of our time was spent developing a list of priorities. Um, some of the uh, areas we're going to uh, what's the word? work on um, are special, new special ed uh, regulations, athletics, uh, health policies, and enrollment of non-resident employees' children. Um, we're also going to try something uh, different this year and take uh, sections of the policy manual and review those um, in an effort to see if we need policies that we don't have or we can delete policies that we do have that we don't need anymore. Um, and our next meeting is uh, October 4th at noon in the Jordan Conference Room. Okay, thank you. And uh, a report out from the Facilities Committee. Um, our first meeting for um, this school year will be tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. And um, we will have SMRT, the engineering firm that we've hired, will uh, conduct the meeting tomorrow. And basically what they will reveal to everyone are their initial findings on um, space needs, whatever the needs are in all of our schools. They have been busy since the beginning of August talking to um, a lot of the faculty and administrators in the schools. So it should be very interesting as to what they come up with tomorrow night. And that's 7 o'clock here. Um, in this room? It, uh, in, in, the, the in the conference room. And so I hope all of the school board members will be able to come too so that everyone can be updated on what's going on. Um, and that's it for facilities. Now, should I talk about? Planning? Yeah, I, I think it would be great for you to talk. Um, Marie is actually the chair of an overall planning committee. The focus has been facilities, but it's actually got a broader scope. So, why don't you why don't you introduce that? Okay. Um, this past week, um, Tom, Elaine Maloney, and Susan Steinman and myself sat down and um, came up with. Uh, an idea as to where we felt the planning committee should be or what uh, what the focus of it should be and um, we we came to the realization that it really is not planning is really not about facilities it encompasses facilities but but really it is um, the big picture of, of what is happening within our whole school district and the big picture in terms of long-range monetary implications. Um, we looked at it in terms of um, a committee that can help strengthen the whole budget process that we go through. In terms of listening to, um, we picked out uh, four major areas in the system um, such as facilities, technology, future direction planning, which is the big one, which encompasses just about everything that relates to each individual school, and maintenance. And, and those four areas are really everything that includes um, any amount of money that we'd ever spend in the district. And we looked at this committee as a place where those four areas would come and, and almost make presentations to or talk about their needs, um, not short-term needs, but long-term needs. And, and for this planning committee to focus on long-range planning for each of these areas so that when we come to um, 
the budget process. We're, we're not just talking about, well, we need this money for this here. And, and we should be able to see a picture of the several years out of, of where our dollars are going to be spent and, and how things get prioritized. And we looked at this committee in terms of the people who might be representative on it. And um, we had listed three school board members, the superintendent, the teachers union president, the one town council member, and the business manager. And we felt that with all of those areas being represented, we really were including everyone to be part of what we wanted to do. Um, it, it appears now that we would probably have two scheduled meetings throughout the year, one in January before the budget process starts to listen to all of these areas and, and what everyone is considering and, and what they want. And then this committee would go back and make recommendations to the board, as in, this is what we've heard, um, and this is how we have prioritized the things, and you know now it's for you to see, before the budget process starts. Um, and then in June, basically, the, the second meeting, would just be almost an annual update of where we were and the things that we did and the monies that we've spent and, and how they were beneficial, how we've used them, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and, and again, I just want to emphasize that it is uh, the big picture. It's long-range financial planning for the entire district. And so it's open for discussion if anyone has any other ideas or things that maybe we hadn't thought about. Any questions? Any comments? I think that um, this is this is a a group that is um, has been in evolution. It's kind of been there. We've been tinkering with it. We knew that there was another structure that was needed in order to really accomplish all of the work that the board is responsible to accomplish and um, putting some of the details around the framework it, um, it looks, looks great. And, and clearly, um, there's a lot of important work, but we do have to be um, future-focused, particularly in those areas like facilities, like technology, um, and um, also make sure that we're integrated with the larger strategic plan that's sort of driving us as a school district. So it looks terrific. Um, moving on, unfinished business. This is great. Each month we don't have unfinished business, so presumably we finish each of our pieces of business every month. We're doing really good. Um, new business. It will start with a consideration. My glasses on. The superintendent's nominations to athletic fee positions for fall 2000. Thank you. I have um, a few individuals that I would like to recommend for consideration for coaching positions, and I'll quickly read them off. Um, at the middle school, Don Burke, eighth grade boys soccer, Drew Riddle, seventh grade boys soccer, Sue Crosby, seventh grade girls soccer, Heidi LaRose, field hockey, um, Tina Vermiglio, eighth grade girls soccer, Jerry McQuinney, Cross Country, Susan Ray Tennis, and Joe Doan, Cross Country. Uh, at the high school, uh, Tim Thompson, JV Girls Soccer. Okay. Is there a motion? Jennifer? I move we accept the superintendent's nominations to athletic fee positions. Good. Second. Jim, thanks. Um, questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor? 7-0. Uh, moving on to the superintendent's nominations to co-curricular fee positions for 2000-2001. Uh, there are a number at the high school, middle school, and system-wide, um, and many of them are mentor teachers. Um, save some time. I could read through the list. The, or the board has the, all board members have the list. 
The only one I would need to, I would make sure, and I think it was written into your list, to add um, Rachel Starr for debate at the uh, middle school and Margaret Welch for speech. I don't know if that was written in on your list. And the other is uh, Wendy Derzowitz as a webmaster. Aside from that, everything else that is on your list is correct. So we need a motion, Jim? I would move that we approve and confirm the superintendent's nominations to co-curricular fee positions for 2000-2001. Good. Second. Jennifer, thank you. Um, comments or questions on these nominations? Seeing none, all those in favor? 7-0. Um, appointment of the school physician. This is um, a, a process I don't know if, you, if, if the board has uh, taken on in the past several years, but it is something that we uh, should be doing. So I'm placing uh, the person in, as a recommendation as a school physician who has been acting in that position for a number of years, um, but this would officially appoint him uh, as our school physician, and that is uh, Dr. Jeff Safer. Okay. Um, we've not done it in the past, but it's good practice and we should do it. Is there a motion? Jen? I move we appoint Jeff Safer as our school physician. Good. Second? Marie, thank you. Comments or questions? Seeing none, all those in favor? 7-0. Um, approval to receive and spend all federal and state grants for the 2000-2001 school year. And again, um, this is done on an annual basis just so that the monies that do come in the federal and state grants uh, approval to, to spend that money. Mm -hmm. Just a standard process. Kevin? I move that we authorize the superintendent to accept uh, to receive and spend all federal and state grants for the Cape Elizabeth School District for the 2000-2001 school year. Okay. Is there a second? Jennifer, thank you. Comments or questions? Seeing none, all those in favor? 7-0. Um, that essentially brings us to the end of our agenda. Before we adjourn, there are some dates to remember. Um, facilities uh, Committee, Again, Marie spoke about this. Um, it's tomorrow evening, September 13th at 7 p.m. in the William Jordan Conference Room. Um, school Board Workshop meeting is coming up on September 26th. Um, that's gonna be at the Middle School Library and Lab, Computer Lab, um, at 7 p.m. And the topic for that is uh, showcasing computer work from recent technology staff development. Um, and that was entitled Impact of Computers on Instructional Strategies. It's gonna be kind of a hands-on session. I know I'm looking forward to it uh, with the involvement of um, the faculty over at the middle school. And um, so that should, that should be uh, terrific. Uh, finance subcommittee meeting coming up on October 10th, which is the regular um, school board meeting evening. That starts at 6.30 in the William Jordan Conference Room followed by the regular school board meeting. Now that is an, an hour next month, is that right, Kevin? That's correct. Okay, um, and then as Jen said, the policy subcommittee meeting will be on October 4th, and that will be at noontime um, in the William Jordan Conference Room. Um, with those announcements made, that concludes our meeting for this evening. Thank you very much.